It is a blessed day from us to you here at Civic Space TV. Welcome to the Citizens uh, Sh Chat Show. And uh, we are delighted that you keep following us, watching us on these programs, on this TV. Thank you so much, our fellow citizen. And this is the Citizens Chat Show, which we are bringing to you this afternoon. My name is Monica Moding. I am sitting in for Damiano Masesa, who is still unable to be here. And this afternoon, we'd like to consider the matter of political parties in Uganda. As we have been following along the week, there's a lot of, I could call it bickering, but I'll be corrected. But it's a discussion going back and forth, one party, you know, uh, putting the other on, on the spot over issues that we, 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 we may not know the civic uh, space here. So this afternoon, we'd like to engage in this conversation because it is important. Political parties are the alternative government. Should citizens of Uganda have hope in political parties or should we be thinking of another way forward? And what way forward can that be? That is the conversation we'd like to have and I would ask you to join us in that discussion here on Civic Space TV and to participate and introduce that discussion to us uh, this afternoon. I have a panel of gentlemen, unfortunately. <laughs> My apologies, as a woman hosting this show, I find it unacceptable, but we have to go on with this program, and I know the men are not offended because of that comment, but uh, these uh, male panels, uh, we are challenging them, but I think it is our own fault that we're not able to bring today a woman here, but I'm not... Uh, uh, doubtful that my pan of the men here will do a good job in terms of giving justice to this topic. And uh, let me introduce my panel. Uh, right across me uh, on the extreme end is uh, Afande Awich, Paula. He looks in a very uh, uh, rare mood today, gentlemen. Mm. I don't know what's happening. Because it's taken over my suit. <laughs> he thinks it's, it's taken, taken over, over UPC. <laughs> and uh, he's dressed in red <laughs> colors. I am suspicious that um, this discussion is exciting him and uh, knowing that he's from the NRM party, of course, he's pleased with what is going on in political parties. He will discount that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you senior. And thank you for giving us your time every yeah. afternoon. He has a roots in UPC, don't bite. <laughs> he does? <laughs> okay, UPC yeah. and NRM seem to be working very well. Yeah, and uh, some people say there is an intermarriage here and there. And I think we, uh, we will hear from Joe today. You are also probably have put no, because the, the, the main political party we have, the alternative yeah. in parliament, in yeah. government right now is no. And you might also be celebrating with what is happening in the political sphere. Uh, but you're welcome, um, Apande, not Apande, but a senior Joseph Otieno, who is our resident panelist here together with the Afanda Witch. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. It's always be nice to be here. Mm -hmm. I was protesting with all our male colleagues, for the record, uh, the absence of a female panelist. Yeah. But all of us actually agree that... But I take responsibility. It has been circ circumstantial. No, we, we've forgiven you all. But mm -hmm. really, really quite clearly, uh, this is a panel which is gender neutral, and uh, we, we will hope it's the last time. So Also, we are when we are talking yeah. about political participation. In, 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 indeed, and uh, in, in UPC, we are yeah. committed to making it 64% women. Mm -hmm. women and young people. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. The chairperson is a lady, and the issues of voice are not arithmetical, they are mathematical. <laughs> what does that mean? Time. That is a professor speaking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Brian here is representing young people, but more importantly, uh, the party in the alternative FDC, Forum for Democratic Change. We are delighted to have you, Brian. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I like listening to him. He has many, many progressive ideas, and we'll get to hear a few from him mm -hmm. concerning political parties. Mm -hmm. And, of course, next to me is also a resident panelist here, Professor Andebesa Muebesa. We are glad to have you again here. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for coming. Greet to our listeners and the discussants out there. Of course, for him, he's an academic. He's in the academia uh, doing research and all that. He has a lot of information I'm, I'm concerning all these uh, political parties and a senior citizen at that. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us this afternoon. Now, gentlemen, the conversation this afternoon or this week entirely has been around NOOP. And um, what is more intriguing is the, the fact that political parties on the other side seem to have put NOOP on the spot. 
we've had comments from Mao, senior Mao, and uh, it looks a bit um, personal to say to say uh, to speak in terms of the attacks on his Twitter handles and other spaces that he has engaged in against no. But we've also heard from FDC through the spokesperson, and they don't also seem to be very very different in terms of their perception about noob. I'm not sure about UPC. UPC seems to be whining and dining with the party in government and we are not sure what Absolute, their comment is. Absolutely not, but my time will come. <laughs> Wait, your, your time will come because you're silent in this conversation. But the bigger discussion is around the divisions. I have written in my columns twice now, including last Sunday, on these matters. On I've this specifically matter. written about Besige and, and Chagulani okay. to say that we should now begin politics of issues rather than personality. So very strong on this. Very strong on that. Mm. And gentlemen, the conversation is around the divisions in political parties mm. internally mm. because there are internal challenges yeah. and mm. NRM is not exempted from this. But also the external challenges that we have among the inter, you know, inter parties here and there. There seems to be a lot of polarization, no agreement, no common standards, values, principles that we can count as a nation in terms of uh, political parties. And yet we have signed up to political parties rather than the, the one state uh, party politics, in, so to say. So that's the conversation. And perhaps to kick start it, we can, uh, and of course, we'll go to a way forward. What can we recommend in this conversation? I would like to uh, pick uh, thoughts from Brian at Hire here. Uh, he is a very aggressive politician, not in the secretariat, but aggressively working for FDC. I, I, aggress, I aggressively work for Uganda. For Uganda? Under the FDC pavilion. Under the FDC pavilion. So uh, I don't want people to look at the things I do mm. to think that I only have, I guess I have FDC in interest yes. at, at heart mm. and interest mm. because mm. I'm a member, mm. but not because I don't work entirely for FDC. And uh, that's why I do many other things mm. apart from politics. Mm. But I want to, first of all, tell our listeners that they do not and viewers, that they don't have parties, first of all. In Uganda. Uh, because parties, you cannot... You, first like, of all, I want you to answer like, this question for me, then you come to that. Yes. Why are the political parties attacking Noop first at of, this first, point first in time? First of all, they are, I'm trying to say there are no parties. Mm. And I want to explain that first, then I can so answer what you're saying. Attacking. Okay. So... You know, NRM likes saying that whenever you say NRM is a dictator, they say, no, we are young democracy. <laughs> There's no, you are either a democracy or a dictatorship. You cannot be young. Mm. You cannot just be nascent. Just, so just within between. People have discussed those things. I've had we are young democracy as a country. Some things cannot happen the way. So you see if Kajo NJ rig, uh, is rigged, you, you, you deploy ISO to go and investigate, give you a military report, which is used to make a political statement. And, and that's where we live. Now, if we live in those situations, that part, parties before we say they are hitting each other, mm -hmm. the most, the, the, the biggest thing hitting parties is the, are the conditions in the country, mm. not the parties themselves. Actually, the bickering would be okay if we had parties working properly, mm. because we, you, you'd expect the debate on matters. They would debate on, on issues. The, on issues. Mm. So, because there are no parties, we think that the ones that are oppose the junta must work together against the junta. Mm -hmm. In the case what an ordinary Ugandan would expect. Yes, but you see, they expect it because of the conditions we live in, mm -hmm. not because it should be like that. In a multi-party democracy, FDC and UP can disagree, and seriously, DP should disagree with FDC and UPC. But the Ugandans expect us to work together and first push away the, the obstacle that has let them not, not assemble, not to collect money for their parties, not even to go to a party headquarters. Mm. In a country where a party headquarters is bombed, closed for three weeks, and then after two, week, after two years, a person comes and tells you, you see those parties are not serious. Mm -hmm. But they were bombed, you are not bombed, mm -hmm. and you are the one bombing them. <clears throat> so I think that bef before the, the biggest thing eating parties are not these bickerings. Mm -hmm. It is actually the NRM eating into it. And, and again also, because of that uh, polarization brought up by the militarization of our politics, people think that they should not discuss with each other. If you discuss with Museveni, or if you call a phone call, 
that's what I need to talk about. Mm, mm, mm. You're but isolated. You're isolated. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and in real parties, it would be okay for the leader of opposition, uh, Mr. Museveni, to be either in parliament or at a function, mm. greet each other, share a platform, mm. and even address same press conferences for Uganda. And even agree on certain issues. Yes, and disagree on others. Yes. Now, that's, we are not in that situation, mm. so we can't uh, discuss parties. But to want to discuss the bickerings amongst the people who are oppressed, is that their leadership has sold them somehow. Mm -hmm. and, and that's my position. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's now more clear with NUP than it was with FDC when FDC was in opposition. Mm -hmm. And I won't tell you why. The reason was that FDC has had leaders who are, who are, first of all, who are determined, who would want to be presidents themselves. Mm -hmm. And there are far, do not care whether they have members of parliament or not. Do you want to say that the intention of NUP is not to take over I, government? I, I, want, I want to address that. Mm. Because whenever elections would, would end, people are used to, to cycle. Whenever elections would be done in this country, the leading opposition party would work with others, would call others on the table, to run campaigns against the leading of the elections. Mm, mm, mm. Or they would run campaigns as that. Mm -hmm. Now, the people would, the people would, would fear that they, though, though Museven is leading them fraudulently and after doing elections, but there is a fight. A fight they are, even if they are 10, but there, is some, there are some people who are fighting to stop that. Wow. Now, we finished this, and, 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 that, was, and that was because uh, the, the, I, had never see, I had never seen or had a, a, celebra a celebration of where the majority opposition in the parliament. I rather had never than, heard about it. Rather than... I actually, actually, I used to hear, because I've been there, mm. I used to, to see two, two parallel groups. One group saying, but UMPs, you shouldn't even swear in. Mm -hmm. Even refuse your positions mm. and come and go and fight. Now, in this case, the leading opposi opposition is happy with its position. Okay. Now, that happiness with its position and being comfortable with the position is, is what the junta would want. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. then... He's going to have the easiest five years without people uh, struggling over position, struggling, not transformation, not transformation, and, mm. and, and, and that is a very, very huge thing. And that was clear from the beginning. Mm. And, and us who we continue telling people that you see, we could be wrong, but they, they, but, but they are not right mm. because you do not do something people have been doing mm -hmm. and claim you want to do it differently and even your approach, there's no difference. Okay, so by you standing aside and critiquing the, the, the leading opposition in parliament, are you not surrendering to the ruling government right now in the, terms of political opposition oh, 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 in Uganda? Okay, <coughs> the problem I have is that the people in Uganda mm -hmm. have to look at us very properly and see <coughs> who has their interest. We shall also not try to cover up. You are going to expose No, no, everything. we are not going to cover up people who don't have an idea, <laughs> an ideology, <laughs> or, or even something they're fighting for. Mm. That's simply because mm -hmm. they, they are opposition. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. we, because covering them up means covering ourselves in this situation of being abused longer. The, the, oh. There's place to take longer. Okay. Rather than say, mm. it's, it's, it's like it's a clear divorce mm. and your wife cheats or your man cheats, beats you every night. But you still don't divorce. But you say because you are married. Mm. You say, now for us we are married, we can't even take, we can't divorce, we must remain in this thing mm. because for the next five years. Regardless. No, you must die in that process instead. Uh -huh. Better divorce and become clear. Say, these guys are in celebration mode, they are happy with whatever, <laughs> with, 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 with the bones they have gotten from the cow. Brian, they don't want the beef. You have made very strong points. I would like That's to it. move to a professor. Of course, he's been listening to you, but my reading of the issues you have submitted are that, yes, political parties cannot operate in Uganda because of the environment, and that should be the bigger discussion rather than the bickering internally. Yes, yes. But also internally, even because if the bickering is there. The internal, the internal bickering mm. could be actually be co could be actually be external, could be caused by external forces. External forces. Because, because there was no way mm -hmm. if if Museven had not gagged Uganda, there was no way an issue of Museven discussing with Vesje would even be a discussion of discussing anywhere. Mm. Because it would be normal mm. to discuss with people in the country. They are citizens, they you are president, so they've discussed with you whether they have agreed with you or not. But because people know that it comes with the bribery mm. and brown envelopes, mm. that becomes bad. 
Okay. That's that's why that's why that's why the thing is destroyed. For. Your your submission is very clear, but I would like to bring in Professor, not because he belongs to no, but he's a senior citizen <laughs> and a neutral force. <laughs> but I'm going. I'm sorry for putting this question to him. He's, he's now just going to. Noob. There's uh, nothing wrong by to way. speak for no. Yeah, we were not able being noob. to get someone from no here. Uh, Professor, in your own uh, uh, analysis of the situation, what do you read from from what Brian says? What could be Noop's defense in this matter? Is there any defense for them anyway? And uh, I mean, I, we shall come to the other uh, recommendations much later. But what, what could be happening in these political parties? Thank you. Mm. And uh, we need to broaden the, the issue, mm. look at a wider context, and then come to the particular, mm. To, mm. To, mm. To, to, to particular cases. I would like to agree with him partly mm. that uh, political parties have challenges mm -hmm. and weaknesses. Some are internal to the organizations, okay. the parties, mm. and others are external to the parties. Mm. We have got a regime. I'm not talking about necessarily NRM. I'm talking about the political regime in Uganda that is not conducive to political parties, mm, mm, mm. whether the ruling party or the opposition parties. Yeah. Because even the ruling party itself is actually so weak that if it was not in power and uses state resources mm -hmm. and state, state leverage, mm. it would also not be there anyway. So the atmosphere is not conducive for political parties to exist in Uganda. Mm, mm. Let's first talk about the external one. Mm -hmm. And I agree with him. Uh, you see, uh, the current political regime has been led by M7 for a long time. So sorry to use him because he's the chief architect. Uh, in 2005, was it 2005 when the parties were returned? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Out to return? mm -hmm. Yeah, in his speech, in your speech for multipartism, he said, ah, we have accepted the multipartism, but we know the movement is superior. And this is the leader of the political regime generally. Mm -hmm. In his acceptance speech or victory speech recently, after these elections in, was it February or January? This year? January, no, Last year. January. Yeah, he did say that my mission in the next five years is to eliminate political parties. I even wonder why there is IPOD when the chief architect of the political regime has stated clearly that my mission in the next five years is to eliminate parties, opposition parties. Why would you go in iPod now if you are going to dialogue with somebody whose chief mission, is to declared be mission, not undeclared, mm -hmm. declared mission is to eliminate the opposition. To eliminate, not compete with, mm -hmm. to eliminate. But is iPod <laughs> relevant? Would it uh, play a fundamental role? Know, in we, can, we, we can have a discussion for that one, but I am just saying that you can see the, the, the regime the and the political parties uh, mm. are operating. Mm, mm. But, uh, uh, but the, general polit the, the general atmosphere is also uh, conducive for political polarization. Mm -hmm. We are a young country. He says we shouldn't say young, uh, that we are a country, or, or do whatever. No, they, we are a, well, a democracy. Uh, or it no, we are a young country. Uh, we are 100 and uh, is it 20 years or 20 something years old? Since we were created by the British back in independence, we are only 59 years. Mm, we are going to be mm, 60 years. Mm, mm. And uh, we are basically a peasant society, an agrarian society, where most of the people are scattered throughout the country in homestead. Trying to survive. They are not consolidated mm -hmm. in the urban centers. We are a risk developed country, and people are basically pursuing survival rights, mm. not civil and political rights. <laughs> <laughs> that is also a challenge mm. in a, a least developed country where people can easily be induced by some money because they have to survive. Oh, so. But we have not also developed values, mm. common values, collective values uh, that we share in common mm. Mm. as a minimum. Mm. Like now, when it, the, 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 there is a war going on in the West, in, in Europe between uh, Ukraine and Russia. And I've heard the European countries and the USA and even the Ukraine, they are saying we are fighting to defend our country, we are fighting to defend our lives, mm -hmm. but we are also fighting to the, to the, to the end mm -hmm. to defend our values. Our, oh yes, and resources. Can I ask mm -hmm. in Uganda whether anybody could say we are defending our values? <laughs> 
that we are fighting to defend our value, which values? Correct. Which political values, which democratic values do we have? Now, under such a circumstances, mm, mm. You, you are bound to have political polarization. Mm, mm. Now, internally, the leadership of the parties also may be uh, having certain challenges, mm. which others are induced from outside, but others are within. Maybe we have not had political leaders with charisma, mm -hmm. with certain competences mm, mm. to manage uh, diversity, to manage conflicts. Knowing that Uganda is a diverse country, you must devise certain uh, methods. You must be so wise to manage diversity within your party. Maybe there are also that, those challenges from within the party, but others are from uh, 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 external. So why are they fighting? Let's look at the opposition parties. You know, this is what I can call insanism. Mm -hmm. Yes, insanism are grasshoppers. In this is grasshoppism. <laughs> you know, when you get grasshoppers, when we were younger, we used to go in the hills and get grasshoppers. You put them in a carabash. When you are going to, at home, you are going to cook, to, 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 to roast them. Mm. When you open, you find they have eaten each, each other. other. You know, they have cut each other. They think the enemy is the is within. Is within. Mm. When the enemy is outside the carabash. <laughs> so the political parties are behaving like insane. Mm -hmm. So they are grasshoppers. This is grasshoppism. <laughs> they say they are forces for change, mm -hmm. but then they are fighting against each other. Mm -hmm. Contradicting each other, opposing each other, is not necessarily negative. Mm. But you must have what the, 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 I think the materialist or Marxist political economy call primary contradictions and secondary contradictions. In this case. So what is the primary contradiction of the opposition political parties? Is the primary contradiction of FDC? Nope. Is the primary contradiction of, of DP? DP. Nope. Mm. I don't think and, so. And. If you claim to be a force of change, then that is not the primary contradiction. Mm -hmm. Can there be secondary contradictions? Yes. There can be secondary contradictions between these opposition political parties. Mm. But you first prioritize the primary contradiction. contradiction. But when Chairman Mao, no but Mao, mm. comes up openly to say, my, next, my mission in the next two years is to fight Noop. And maybe I will extend mm -hmm. after two years. He joins the so does, does he understand primary and secondary contradictions? Is he part of the forces of change? Mm -hmm. If Probably he not. thinks that the forces of change are now lost, why doesn't he officially go and state that I am now with the Narim? <laughs> so that everybody is, uh, sees it. Because mm -hmm. there can be challenges within NUP, like there are challenges in every party, including mm -hmm. the ruling party. Mm -hmm. But unless you see the difference between primary contradictions and secondary contradictions, and you look at primary you look at secondary contradictions and you make them primary, you then you the are nothing, but you are behaving like insane. Hold it right there, Professor. We are coming back to you, and uh, of course, you have expounded for us a new concept: insaneism and hopism. Ras <laughs> <laughs> hopism. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Joseph Oteno, you have heard it from the professor. Yeah. What are these primary conditions and secondary? Do you, do, do you have them in UPC? And uh, d d does the, the political you know, uh, outfit in outside NRM understand these things? Um, I, I must just say that um, perhaps the political party that understands the mess in which this country is and that understands the mess in which political organizations are uh, in these situations better than any, including NRA, uh, who don't understand themselves, is UPC. Where is it? Um, <laughs> Where? We, Where is UPC? UPC is an idea. It's everywhere. That, 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 <laughs> it's an idea. Everywhere means it is even in NRM. Indeed. Yeah. 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 Well, everywhere. Everywhere. And, 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 and regardless, and perhaps that's Please. the beauty of it, and if it's said by the professor, <laughs> Apostle Ben Gandhi, I re-emphasize. The point is this. UPC is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's an idea that must not and will not die. NRA will die. Museveni will rest. And UPC will prevail. And UPC is, in fact, the political organization of the future going Good forward. Luck. And I'll say this. 
I was saying from our understanding that uh, when Museveni persuaded DP that it's okay for DP to jump from parliament in 1981 and go on to the bush in Luero, they thought they were actually fighting an enemy, an enemy of some sort, you know, in parliament. So DP had some legs in the bush, some legs in parliament, you know. Museveni, who had been an avowed anti political parties and organizations in 1979-80. In fact, uh, I've got a friend who was part of the delegation after 1979 Liberation War, uh, where they were going around Southeastern and Southern Africa. Museveni had clearly refused uh, return to multipartism and political competition. So that is what young people who follow these guys should know. Museveni is not a multipartism. He doesn't believe in these things. You know, so he was compelled. So come 1980 general elections, he forms his UPM thing, which was basically a basis for going to torture our people in the bushes, come take over power. And, you know, immediately they took over power in 1988, I mean, 1986, they banned political parties. Objective number one of the NRA, NRM, I think it was the legal notice number one, was, you know, in short, basically the idea was basically to sink UPC and form a one-party state. Come military dictatorship under NRM, NRM. Mm. and they did. Mm. Once they did that, UPC took on the mantle alone. Very, it was a very lonely, lonely journey. I was slightly younger than this guy. Mm -hmm. It's been a very lonely journey, mm -hmm. journey trying to fight to reclaim Restore the political space political that we're trying to talk about now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the fight that took us to November for uh, November fourteenth, uh, uh, two thousand four, when the, uh, the, the, the the senior courts in this country, to, to, in their wisdom, ruled in our favour that the ban on political parties were both illegal and unlawful and should be lifted. And that led to a return to multipartism that uh, the professor was talking about. Uh, and, and UPC had now to be re-registered together with DP and other political parties, and that's how FDC came. Once in a while, this guy should give us a, a clap, a thank. And the reason is, that, and today I'm saying this for the first time, in 2000 or thereabout, BCJ was emerging and he wanted to be a leader. I know that Bessie visited Milton Obote. I'm saying this on, on camera deliberately. He visited Milton Obote and, uh, in, in Zambia. And my opinion was sought in London. And one of the things that I was asking that out, out of this conversation, um, Bessie should give a commitment that in the event that he won the 2001 elections, uh, he, he, he should be committed to returning to multipartism. My understanding, and you can correct this, was that he was not forthcoming on that. And I was very disappointed. But the point is this, that so when Museveni came to power, banned political parties, moved to this kind of one party one list thing, killed political parties, killed institutions, killed systems, and created his mini-monarchism in which we are operating at the moment. So once political parties fought back, you know, to claim the space, Museveni really has been playing the master grasshopper person, mm. as it were. And that is the context. Now, the leaders of other emergent political organizations like FDC and, and others, need to be able to understand this. My suspicion is that most of them don't. Someone like Bessie has an idea what these things are, but Bessie needs to liberate himself from maybe the movementism kind of stuff, including his role, and Bessie and Munti to an extent, their roles in the mess in which we are. You know, um, ask for maybe internal forgiveness amongst themselves so that they're able to liberate themselves to freely have open conversations with us. It's not an attack on them. I'm just giving context. Chagulani, you will understand, he simply does not understand these things mm. because he came up and here he is. But where are we at the moment? What I'm trying to say is this. <laughs> Political parties in this country, except for UPC, which is lucky has remained a political party. Over the with, years. with the values, ideology, leanings, and everything else. At the moment, battling over leadership, no understanding, is a coherent political party. The next other political party that has managed out of structures it <laughs> was a DP until the other day. Part of actually what is battling between DP and NUP, I suspect, is because the home ground of DP, which is Buganda, came in and got swept in mm, by, by NUP. Mm. And my good brother, Norbert, maybe if he was getting my advice, perhaps I would manage the internal dynamics in DP and NUP, meaning Heartland Buganda, in a slightly different way. Um, but since they're managing personalities and interests rather than political values because they don't really exist, <laughs> you know, it's not surprising where we are. Mm -hmm. But going forward, what is it? Mm -hmm. I think because most of these political organizations emerge out of monolithic personal merit, one 
party system where it is a matter it's not even about charismatic mm -hmm. it was basically monolith mm -hmm. one party state a personal made thing mm -hmm. you stand as an individual and succeed you realize that people follow aunt because of uh, Mugisha Mood and nothing else uh, uh, because you can ask what is aunt beyond Mood with respect these are fantastic guys not anyway but really because this is what Museveni had created at the beginning now most of our colleagues who emerged out of NR NRM and many other people who've come in since that time They've sort of, forgive me, um, maybe because I was trying to say these things and mm -hmm. then you know, the sweat. And the sweat is simply because... Uh, oh, that is how the Congress... <laughs> no, the Congress is, you know, we are, we are fine. You know, we, 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 we steam off quite, quite naturally, you know, and, and, and that's good for, for, for our hearts and good for our bodies. So um, the, the, the point is this, that we are emerging out of a difficulty in which Museveni placed us leading to the opening of the political spaces. UPC itself, once we got um, the right to register, mm -hmm. uh, I can use that maybe just to, to make sure that uh, this is fair and objective. You know, Obote dies just before the first delegates conference. Mama Mire takes over, and a generation of leaders had faded off. And in between there, we just about managed to go between Mama Mire and, and, and Olaro Tuna. <coughs> and from Olaro Tuna until today, we basically have, you could I almost certainly no leadership you know, which is apparent and clear, democratic, and, and mandated by the people. Mm -hmm. But really this, because partly because of the morality of the whole thing, but generally because Museveni continues, continues to yes. control this organization. <coughs> he wants them to sink so that he continues to rule his way. Not because NRA, NRM is a political party, but because it's a political organization to serve his purpose. Okay, Joe is a presidential candidate much <laughs> I think later when UPC will hold elections, when, was, when, is, when, that when they will, when? Uh, and so That's one of the questions we'd want to put to him is how to address uh, this that? kind of challenge. When is that? It is not clear, and uh, no, no, no. That's um, why I say in the no, because, because, because you see, if mm. you want to participate in elections, mm. you must know when. There must be a roadmap. Maybe this time it's not there. Yes, could, so you, you could be yes, a, you could be a candidate in perpetuity. You mm. can remain a candidate mm. and. Mm. <coughs> Let, let, me, let, me, let me answer the young, let, let me answer the young man. It's strategic not to announce your name earlier because your, your opponents can attack you earlier. No, let, let, let me answer the young man. And mm -hmm. it's a fair enough question. Mm -hmm. No, as far as systems, political organization structures are concerned, there's no political party in this country better than UPC. We actually know it all. In mm -hmm. fact, we know it very well. The problem is that we're weak for very many reasons. But that said, no. Um, we had UPC leadership elections in, in December uh, 2020 in which I effectively won. The matter is in court. There is evidence for it. Um, thanks to the media, um, uh, Jimmy, who had been chucked out by the Court of Appeal in September, continues to present himself as leader of the party. But I don't think it's necessarily the person that thought it was coming much later. But okay. that is something that's already been done. Okay. But structurally, on organizationally and constitutionally, uh, uh, no, no, we do these things and we do it well. Except the weaknesses that we are facing is no different from the weaknesses all other so, political so parties. Well, you're, so you're no longer a candidate, but you're UPC a president elect. Um, no, no, I don't call well, myself that. I uh, I, I'm waiting for court. Those and, matters and are still in court. We may not go yeah, further than indeed, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just giving us information. But when he does contest and wins, perhaps he will be a he solution. He won in December. Well, that is what he alleges because it is in court. <laughs> he, won, he won in December. <laughs> okay, we'd like to pick from the NRM leadership here. I'm sure for them... Gentlemen, they are smiling. The other day we heard from Tamale Murundi joining Mao in that same conversation, in that line of thought. Mm -hmm. He also said, of course, he's not the official spokesperson of NRM, <laughs> but uh, his thoughts, the moment he speaks out on behalf of NRM issues, we think that he is uh, a sent messenger. He's <laughs> <on laughs> a presidential advisor on media and what affairs. So, uh, we had him commenting, or commenting in the same direction. We are going to unveil Noop and uh, uh -huh. Is there something that we don't know, perhaps? I know you cannot say that on camera, but it looks as if NRM is behind the machinations and you are celebrating and happy with the death of political parties in the country. Are they even there? How, how, no, what is if, your opinion? If, if Nupu was dead, mm. all these other forces would not be abusing it. It means it is alive. Okay. We would like to hear from NRM. Yeah, thank you so much, yes. Honorable. Mm. Um, I'm happy to be here as usual, mm. but uh, more especially enjoying the company of Professor. I think when I joined Makere Law School in 1995, Professor was already there and he has been as brilliant as ever. Wow. Because I joined Makere in 95 and left in 99 Law School. I can uh, confirm that his posts usually go viral. 
<laughs> and our young man, nice to meet you, and my colleague, of course, the congressman. Now, whether or not parties exist, I'm saying it exists by legal terms mm -hmm. and by practical terms. Mm. There's where parties are registered, they are registered. Mm -hmm. The only debate is whether they do what they're supposed to do. Now, for a young man to say parties don't exist, when we have indicators, the legal framework, registration, their certificates, registration certificates, I, I think it is not correct. The other thing that I would maybe agree with the professor is that uh, we have a young country mm -hmm. and actually a young democracy. Mm -hmm. The young man doesn't want us to say so. He says you either have a young democracy I mean, you either have a democracy or none. And Brian, and being young law, is not offensive. I in, believe. No, 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 in the law, yeah. when yeah. you say yeah. that, yeah. in the law, when you are sat, you quote the authority. Now, if you don't quote the authority, that's so it is provided that either democracy or not. If you don't quote an authority, then it is your opinion. So where is so the, that is your opinion. So so your opinion. It's also your opinion. No, it's also yes. your, it's also opinion. So that is my opinion. So fine. So it is the young man's opinion right. that mm -hmm. either you have <clears throat> or you don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in legal terms, mm -hmm. we have it now. The professor went ahead to even verify how young we are in terms of years. By fact. Actually, he went as far as oh. giving the ingredients of a young democracy. <clears throat> ingredients like we are fighting for survivalism. Mm -hmm. We do have not developed the values. You could even say we have not developed classes. Mm -hmm. Most of mm -hmm. these countries mm -hmm. have class relationship. Mm -hmm. okay? Economic classes. Yes, Actual economic classes. classes. So <laughs> all these, are, professor didn't want to say these are actually ingredients of a young democracy, mm -hmm. which we don't have. <laughs> So, uh, but, but the mature uh, authoritarianism. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll so to you my, from opinion is, is my opinion is that my opinion is that the professor talks of Marxist political theory. My opinion is that we, we as a country, we impose a superstructural <laughs> nature on a, a wrong economic base. Without going the economic the base could not support the superstructure, mm. so we brought him. Mm. And as you quoted Museveni, Museveni personally, as I remember, was against the pluralism. Maybe you are right. Mm. In the part right, of what you quoted, he said, you people, you have accepted my Remember, it will come with this consequence. And he cited one also. Mm -hmm. Now in the, party, in the NRM system, you can go for campaign, mm. for member parliament. Mm. When you lose, you come back to work. He says, under multi-party system, once you go out, please, you're not coming back. Mm -hmm. Because those are the negatives of multi-party. Mm -hmm. I was part of the people who actually advocated for movement system when we held a referendum. I'm not surprised. My friend seems to say uh, it is a court which ordered it. But I also know for a fact we had the referendum. Mm. My view was that the movement system... Can I just clarify that? Yeah, I'll give no, you no, just, wait, just, I just, didn't no, ask no, you no, to clarify. No, 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 wait, opportunity to make wait. comment on now, just in two minutes or so. Uh, before my view the next was future. that hmm. the, 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 the young country and the young democracy could not support a movement. For example, during the NRM, which was a one-party system, at, I mean a one-state system at hmm, that time, hmm, hmm. did you know that you could go to parliament and censor a minister. The, the, the latter is correct. Mm. Do you know that you could go to parliament and censor a minister? <laughs> did you know that under the NRM, mm. one time when there was a censorship of a minister, the attorney general refused, he censored, he was the first to vote. To line up. Did you know that a debate erupted in cabinet to defend some ministers during a censor motion? Mm. And Amanya Mushaga said, defending corruption is not part of collective responsibility of yes. mm. This one you could see in a movement system. So now it is. Now comes a multi-party. Now it mm. is. If you, even if a, a, a movement MP walks naked from city square to Parliament, they will say it is a multi-party mm. will be waged. Mm. Mm. And for us, who knew this, the campaign it in the movement. <laughs> so this system was super imposed on it. Mm -hmm. But be as it is, we are there. We are bearing the, the movement is a party. Mm. We accept it without, but what we said was on record. And we said one when we adopted the system. Mm. What we have is on record. But now we have to move with the system as it is. We are putting. Now, about the squabbles, I want to say that it's not part of NRM's mm. issue. Mm. 
<laughs> we are committed to political parties doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And we are a key driver in iPod. We wish them well. We wish them to organize. We, them. we are not part of their forum. You and who? The new the, the and the director in the party. <laughs> president Museven is the chairman of NRM. Uh -huh. Yes, I was coming He's the there. president of Uganda. I was coming there. Uh, He's the chief. He's the commanding chief. I was coming to he your court. Your court. I was coming to your court. That my mission Professor, is... Professor, we are coming back to you. So yes. you and who? Yes. I, I still insist. It's I still for the NRM insist party. I'm a director in the party. I'm talking on behalf of the party. Mm. Now, the statement that you quoted with M7 is, we have taken analysis of percentage trend. Mm. That in the first election, we got 76. In the other elections, we are getting 68. In, we seem to have been going downwards. So the president said, and he has recently reiterated it in mobilization strategy, that our mobilization should be needs-based. Mm. For you as a party to win somebody, so these needs, needs are varied whether building roads or hospitals or schools or whatever. Now, what you meant is, the, considering our statistics of trend of reduction, we are waking up to make sure in the next election <laughs> we win. <laughs> it's not literal. So this one didn't win. It's not a literal eliminating the to killing to they want to win. win. They win. They so want to win I the think one. you are overstretching his statement. You are misinterpreting him. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have taken trends of statistics of reduction. So and we are saying, so, okay. and what Museveni was saying is that, look, gentlemen, we have to address the needs of the people mm. so that in the next trend, we win with a big margin. We kill. <laughs> now, that is when you literally saying is killing parties and we are run, returning to a one party system. No, that is not what he meant. Addressing so, the needs as you promote your greed. <laughs> well, I am coming back to you, gentlemen. So, but as uh, a funder which is submitting, another issue came to my mind. Yeah. He was talking about the superstructure, gentlemen. Yeah. And they are saying we impose these political parties yeah, on no. this superstructure. But my question is, is that they've been in this place for in that position, yeah. okay, for more than 36 years. And you have failed, yet you have failed to raise that, you know, that economic base that you are talking about as a political you, party. Why you see, is that so? You see, when now the, that we have... When the professor so mentioned is a young country for, of 60 years, mm -hmm. I could read in his mind that he's talking <laughs> of democracy of 500 years. Wow. Like the America. Mm. You are talking of democracy like Switzerland of maybe a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So why he, meant, why he brought in the young years of 60 years? He was silently juxtaposing with other old democracies. So 36 years that you are saying is a very short time. It's little. <laughs> <laughs> I will have a quick comment from you we before we move to the that. next topic. No, no, no. Just if you have a comment, but, but, a quick but, one on what but, we have but, shared also, so far in two, two minutes. To, to him that the issue of a young democracy and uh, uh, and the mature dictatorship and anything is also your opinion. Mm. And let me tell you something. As, as the democracy shrinks in Uganda, dictatorship grows. Mm. If we are growing from, if every year that ends, would be growing some feet, one, f mm. one foot into, the demo into a democratic uh, science mm. would be better. But, mm. But we are walking uh, uh, into a shrinking civic space, okay. and someone wants to tell me that that's growth. That's why. Well, we have the civic but space. Two, here. But two, but two, <laughs> but, for me, but two. For me, we are growing into but, democracy. But two, okay. but two. About, the, the, no, no, about space the age, right now. about the years. Mm -hmm. Just a quick you, you one. See, no, no, you see, Uganda, its children, about 36% of them are stunted. Mm -hmm. Uganda seems to be stunted even democratically, like the children are stunted. Mm -hmm. And that is because, and, and that's, and I can show him why. Because Professor wants to tell me about the years. Mm. But how old is Ghana? In terms of democracy. The, the years. Their age. Because if oh, you're using okay. years, if you're, maybe African countries mm -hmm. should be towards look like and how or, different or towards are they Ghana. From us? Ghana is very different from you. Mm. Ghana has had transitions from a person to another peacefully, peacefully. from one party to another. They're not like you. You're just. Yeah. A, you don't need to go far. And, and maybe Kenya is, here. And also yeah. Kenya here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Joseph, I will yeah. just give you two minutes. No, no, no. Just, move just, to a, the next just, just a quick one, actually. Mm -hmm. This debate, I'm not quite sure whether we can conclude it in one. <laughs> we cannot. <laughs> we cannot. <laughs> we cannot. And I, I think possibly we should actually have phase two. Mm -hmm. And the reason is it's extremely important because it's politics which is the most important game in town. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe that we, we have this conversation, conclude this, and then we come back and talk about <coughs> leadership, including political parties and organizations, how they are founded, their values, and, mm. and, the, and the, mm. the reasons why we have some... would like to but, get but, to but, that but shortly. In, in, yes. in a very quick mm. one, actually. No, 
uh, uh, which is rather misleading. Um, UPC <laughs> took these guys to court, mm -hmm. and you know, you guys are lawyers. Took this from 1990, as well as 1993, the, the NRA courts actually ruled that ban on political parties was both illegal and unconstitutional. But because it was temporary, as they'd written in their funny book, you know, uh, it was okay. We appealed. Appealed, appealed. DP woke up from 1996 or thereabout. They joined us. And in 2004, November 17th, the ruling was decisive. Mm. It is the November 17th ruling that, for, uh, that um, um, on December 18th, 2004, Milton Water asked me to join the colleagues of, our colleagues of ours, both at home and abroad, to come and constitute the preparation process, which is the political process that we're talking about. That's actually how my exile from this bunch of uh, bandits uh, brought me to where I am. But the point is this. <laughs> we also co campaigned, campaigned, that the so-called referendum under the NRA thing was irrelevant. It's important that which is talking about it. Do you know why? They, comp they pushed for the referendum. And we argued that the referendum was not necessary because court had already pronounced itself. Do you know why they're going for the referendum? They're going for the referendum. One, because Museveni always wanted to be allegedly right, you know. Two, because they knew it was home for eating people's public money for free. The referendum of 2005 that we're referring to <laughs> was absolutely not necessary. The billions of shillings that was wasted down there, I hope one time in Jesus' name, some of you guys pay for it. Well, Professor, you have two minutes just to make a comment if there's anything that came through the initial discussion before we go for a break. When we return, gentlemen, would like to consider the issue of do we even have such values? Do we have the minimum bear? We can say as a country, this is non-negotiable and it is something we can always agree before we disagree. So that is the conversation we shall come to. But I'd like Professor just to make a quick comment. The before. quick comment is like this, that um, political parties are political organizations to organize society. Mm. And my comment that Uganda is a young democracy, is a young country, true. Uh, but when you are young, you are supposed to be growing. Yes, yes. Not stunted. <laughs> yes, stunted. <laughs> stunted. Now, the political leadership in Uganda since independence has deliberately stunted its children. Mm -hmm. Actually, starting with UPC. Absolute nonsense. Uh, <laughs> let me talk my nonsense. Mm. Uh, between 1966 67 mm. and 1971, Uganda was a de facto one-party state. Mm -hmm. This is a fact, mm. which is nonsensical. Mm -hmm. Because UPC was actually building towards a one-party state, although it hadn't uh, declared it officially, but it was a one-party, it was a de facto one-party. Mm -hmm. Of course, when Idi Amin came, for him, he started the parties completely because there was no alternative political organization allowed. Yeah. When Obote II came, because I can't talk about UNRF because it was a very short time, mm -hmm. the Obote II regime, uh, UPC, all continued to stand political parties mm -hmm. in the sense that although it never declared the, that they wanted to pursue a one-party system, political space was narrowed because there was even physical violence against opposition. Mm, mm. And using militarism, mm -hmm. because Obote used to make a statement, the effect challenging Samuel Gallery, that where you are generals, the same thing that NRM is, is doing. doing. Yeah. So they, they seem to I have tend to think, the I same, tend to think as well that same, same NRM is a very good student of UPC. The Most of the things, yes. So the, the, the growing should be there, but you don't stand a child and then you go around and say, not my child is, not is, is Kwashako, is brown. And now I have a Muzungu. <laughs> you see, I have a Muzungu because he's brownish. <laughs> I think we have to go ahead and be brownish. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are the source of at, some stage, at some stage, I will go to indicators to show that oh, we are brown. Oh, you to look at the I will go to <laughs> indicators. Oh, I will go to indicators to now. show that there mm. is growing. <laughs> there is a growth. Okay. Whether there is growth or not, the NRM, because we the have to go for NRM a break. The vice chairman, gentlemen. It's been the same for the last 40 years. That can't be growth. That is stunting. Mm. That is okay. having a brown person. <laughs> and because of Pashakwan, you think it is a Zoom. Okay, Muzum. please. Can we have a break? I, I think that this conversation, like Joseph said, cannot end today. We have to take it to another episode in case uh, we don't exhaust our conversation discussion here. But I uh, would like to take a break now. And when we return, 
would like to go deeper into the question of whether as a country we can have a minimum bear on which we agree upon mm. as political parties and then use that as, you know, the minimum discussion point in terms of political parties and disagree mm -hmm. where necessary or agree on what has to be uh, done. So when we return. The Citizens Chatroom happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV, freedom always. I uh, would like to welcome our viewer. You found us in a heated backdoor conversation. Of course, the matter is so hot that we cannot conclude it in this particular episode. We shall have to have another because the issues that are rising seem not to have been addressed in the earlier discussion. So what we would like to achieve with this particular episode is a conversation around the political values of this country, or rather democratic values as a country. I see NRM now has what they call ideological clinics for their cadres. I don't know if other political parties have similar interventions do we have such in academic institutions and other places? So they the question before you gentlemen mm. is what mm. would be that ideal Uganda, certainly, mm. in terms of principles, in terms of values, in terms of the democratic culture, in terms of also policies mm. which we can agree mm. on because that is the structure that we, we need to work on in terms of uh, democratic principles. So mm. I, I just want to pick your thoughts because what we are doing here is this a civic space. We mm. just don't want to talk without also providing, uh, you know, a dream about oh, a better Uganda. Uganda. Yeah. So through your okay. discussion, we pick many things, and uh, it's being documented here and there. So mm. I will begin with um, Professor picking your thoughts on that particular minimum there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I hope the listeners and the, the discussants here will bear with me to mm. give some broader context, even but beyond briefly, Uganda. Briefly, I don't know whether I'm going to be brief. In about five minutes. Because well. I'm talking philosophy here. Mm. <laughs> uh, you see, societies have grown mm. because they have had organizational principles mm -hmm. and ideas upon which they have built their societies. Mm, mm. Unfortunately, in Africa, we are following other principles and organizational ideas. Mm. The Jews, the Israelis, came up with their organizational principles and values, which they could find in the Bible, and they sold them the whole world. Mm, mm. And to them, the whole world has to follow those organizational principles those are the ten commandments the, that they are well, and many others <laughs> because you all read the bible and then mm. you have the the western world mm. uh, during the age of enlightenment they came up with organizational principles and ideas that lead the current liberal democracy mm -hmm. and they said these are universal and the whole world must go by those principles the chinese now have remembered that they had Confucianism mm -hmm. as an organizational principle and ideology and philosophy. Mm. Now they are selling it to the whole world that the Chinese model is universal to the whole world. Now the Africans here we are, we are just waiting for <laughs> other organizational models and principles of the Jews, of the of the of the of, 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 of the, the Americans. Of, of the Americans and the and the West mm. of, of, of the Chinese. Mm. And now the whole of Africa is having these summits. Japan Africa Summit, Russia Africa Summit, Europe Africa Summit, America Africa Summit, <laughs> Turkey Africa Summit, now United Arab Emirates Africa Summit. We are just following those summits and we are, we are bracketed together. Mm. So we need to dream. He said we cannot dream. Mm -hmm. When the Americans say the American dream, mm -hmm. we need to have the Ugandan, the dream. Ugandan dream. And therefore, we, need to come, uh, we needed to have a national dialogue mm -hmm. and come up with the Ugandan, the Ugandan uh, uh, values and ideas and principles and market them mm -hmm. so that whoever goes beyond them is brought to order. Mm -hmm. So what happens, like say, in mature democracies, let's take the Europe. Europe, for, the, for example, all members of EU. By the way, before you access EU, you must be a believer in and a practicer of 
those ideas and principles mm -hmm. for organizing society. Mm -hmm. Now, there are basic principles or basic ideas which are a minimum mm -hmm. that we can agree upon and have a consensus. Mm -hmm. Then we can disagree on the political direction, on the policy directions, mm -hmm. on the governance directions we want to take. But after agreeing on bare basic minimum principles and ideas, mm -hmm. that's why now, as the war is, you know how America is fractured, polarized mm -hmm. in their political mm -hmm. party competition. Yes. So is even Europe. But now, in the face of Russia, they are saying we are ready to die for the ideas and the principles okay. for which we stand for. Mm. Today, if Uganda was invaded from one region mm -hmm. of Uganda, mm -hmm. I don't expect <laughs> anybody to say we are ready to die for the values and the principles of Uganda. Actually, there will be people who will support the other group. Mm -hmm. Precisely because we don't have a bare, minimum, agreed, principle, ideas, we shall always follow other people's model. Mm. Israel model, the Western model, <laughs> the Confucian model. Now Makerere has started even Confucianist class. They have even started the Confucian, the, uh, BA Confucianism. <laughs> we are following other people's models instead of coming up with our models. When the Arabs come under Islamism, we shall follow those models. Um, Please, yes. can Ugandans have a national dialogue, mm. agree on the minimum principle, uh, values and ideas, mm for which we can stand for, and then we can politic by disagreeing on policy, pre, po, no, policy direction, mm -hmm. but not the basic minimum ideas of governance, democracy, and organizing society. Professor has put it very clearly for all of us, and I think Brian, you'll come And if back we to don't do issue. that, we shall continue following other people's okay. models as universal models. I will come back to you, Brian, on the issue of policy, because you teams in uh, political parties seem to be disagreeing on policy, and the values are not the issue that we have at the moment. But as I reflect on that, and we, I think Professor has raised a very important uh, uh, issue in terms of the national values. And I'm looking straight at uh, a, a witch here who is in charge of government mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And in their manifesto, they talk about nationalism, socioeconomic transformation, pan-Africanism <laughs> and patriotism. Do you think these are values that are, uh, you know, that we have designed? But those are for right the party, now? not for Uganda. I, I, I just want to pick his thoughts <laughs> on that because he's not the for the country in government. <laughs> and why are they not using the opportunity that iPod is providing us with? To, you no, know, there was the Elders Forum. iPod is also problematic. And envision <laughs> the Uganda that we want. What, are, what, is, what is your thought on those uh, issues? Well, first of all, mm. I like to concur with Professor mm -hmm. that we need to have that minimum. Just like uh, he has ably illustrated the West is saying, we can die for this. We really need something that a reasonable, we talk of a reasonable man, mm. but a reasonable Uganda mm -hmm. would agree on. That is it. And that's what we have tried to market in the NRM. Uh, Professor says which, we, which it is principle? a party. <laughs> we have talked of patriotism, pan-Africanism, nationalism. And by the way, nationalism, as we are saying, the oneness of the country. You realize that under the constitution, we have what is called indigenous communities, mm -hmm. uh, which incidentally includes Banyarwanda from Rohama from Tungam, because they are cut by border, <clears throat> they are this side. They're in the constitution mm. as Ugandan indigenous communities. Now, to maintain this one group of people, mm. it's not always easy. You can see even Ukraine in Europe, they're breaking into three countries because yes. they have those divisions. <clears throat> Yugoslavia, mm. Tito. Mm. Tito, because of, of his personal integrity or capability, ruled Yugoslav for a long time. When Tito died, they cut themselves into pieces. He overstayed in power. To the extent that at one time, <laughs> that was Serbia and Montenegro, yes. <laughs> which had remained part of Yugoslavia, they went for World Cup as one country. When they qualified to semi-final, they broke up home. And they are playing as a team. They say, hey, now if you win the cup, where are you taking it? <laughs> so, are you taking it to Serbia or to Montenegro? <laughs> now, we in NRM are saying that is one core principle that all of us should and that is why Professor but FDC says one country, one yeah. people, one yeah. party. That if there that's was an they, attack, that's what FDC says. Yeah. That Uganda, if there was people. an attack, we would know as an attack but on Uganda. Party. Okay, mm. so that we don't have this. So the issue of uh, minimum, mm. 
that professor say I agree with it and I'm saying as a party we have continued to advocate it for long it is in our constitution we, we, and we have we, kept on capturing it in the manifesto for Uganda as a country not for one the party but that's... then what was professor we cannot prescribe a medicine good for the party and we say that medicine is not good for the country mm -hmm. what are we talking about mm -hmm. we are saying this is how we see we it should move. and we want it seen all that over. Way. And that is why when we are signing a social contract with the people, mm -hmm. when we are going for campaign, it is what we market. Maybe you cannot say we have one values for the party mm -hmm. and then one values for you. Maybe Maybe you can. Can. What are we talking about? You no, but we, we believe we yeah. should, the medicine good for the party. What is good for the party is good for the country. Mr. Awich, the question may be to you then, you if, uh, if, you, if you're already envisioning in that way, how come that Ugandans have not picked up these uh, ideals that you are having? Nationalism, those are very you know, high-sounding uh, ideologies that if Ugandans were moving tandem, it would be taking the country much more forward. No, but Why are Ugandans not yet patriotic? Yes. No, but we have tried mm -hmm. now, as you see. <laughs> I have already said in the constitution we have 69. Amazing. You can't tell that to a European country like Macedonia with 150,000 people, Tracks. Andorra with 5,000, uh, 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 some countries with 17,000 people. Mm. So we have managed. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you went to Rohama, you are Karamojong, mm -hmm. and you are talking on phone to your people in Karamojong, mm -hmm. who bothers in Rohama mm -hmm. that you are speaking Karamojong? Mm -hmm. Or if you went to speak Kiyankole <laughs> in Lira, who bothers you are talking on phone? Mm -hmm. We have tried. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is not visible. Mm. So the question or aspect of nation, in, in, in nationalism, we have tried. When, when was it not so possible? It is, Since independence, when was it? And well, where? I probably he has made <clears throat> his point. He says so. It is progressive. <laughs> it is progressive. It, it is, is progressive, yeah. gentlemen, yeah. Yeah. Joseph and Brian. It is progressive. Brown, Brown. They have tried. And those are the ideals they are marketing to the country in terms of principles. I believe also culture, so, socioeconomic, and development. And socioeconomic transformation. They are working at it. I think, uh, Brian, you could take a shot at that in terms of your thoughts. Uh, and Joseph, uh, you. I, I, I would not want to, uh, to start by blaming anybody. I'd want. The, pro the problem is not only with UPC, NRM, FDC, and us here. Mm -hmm. The problem is, mu is much where is much where why Uganda has no bare minimum, no police agenda, and therefore no agreement mm -hmm. is something that goes way back on how Uganda was formed. Mm -hmm. First of all, nobody sat. Uganda has never sat together to say we want to have we want a to country be as a called country. Uganda. Mm -hmm. First of all, mm -hmm. but now that we are here, we are going to discuss that. Mm -hmm. That's why we are going. Some, some people that had guns came here and said, from that side to this side, like cows in a crash, from today, this is Uganda. you are Uganda and you shall ruin this Uganda, mm -hmm. using guns and force. Mm. Unfortunately, even the, the leaders we have had since what you call independence, mm. just <laughs> took that template and they govern Uganda on that template. Mm. Now, it means that Ugandans have never thought they are Ugandans. Mm, yeah. And therefore they cannot have a bare minimum. So what do we do? What you do is first of all, dis dis destroy that template that they have been ruling us on since uh, colonial time, to independence to death. You want to undo Uganda? Uh, no, you, no, you don't undo Uganda. Mm. You undo the template on which Uganda is ruled. The people of what Uganda... What does that mean? The what does that mean? Pardon? What do you mean by undoing the template? You unpackage it. You, you, you get power from people who hold guns like you, and these people. I can say the same thing. Give it to us. No, 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 no. That is undoing the template. The template is a gun. The template is a gun. Okay. So we must democratize the gun. Mm. The guns must be controlled by the population, and the population should have a say on where, what guns do. You, you can't and, democratize. I, no, no, no. I'm saying. No, you can't. I'm, I'm saying. But you see, every country has guns, but they are, they are democracies, and, and the gun is not used to shoot people mm. who are dressing rallies, who are doing. But to protect, protect them. them. Mm. Now, or, or put it this way: we need to democratize democracy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, now, when that happens, when the guns, when people have control over the gun, it means they are free. People who are not free cannot have a bare minimum to talk mm, about. Mm, mm. People must first be free. Now, when they are free, they can gather, discuss, and say, we think where we are. So that is undoing the template where the, the colonial is said from here to here. No. The it's template I'm saying is, mm. the, 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 what, what held us together was a gun, force. 
that force must be undone. And he says it has been sustained. It has been wow. sustained. Mm -hmm. Now, it should be through civil dialogue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then, you come and say, you see, they will say, now you see, we find ourselves in this situation. Mm -hmm. But Uganda, where we are now, we can't say we are going away. No one wants to go away. Everyone mm -hmm. wants to be Uganda, by the way. Including Oteno. I am very proud of my Uganda passport. They talked about breaking away. The airport, anyway, I say I'm Ugandan. That's why I don't have your students, but I have one students from Uganda. Now, when we sit, we say, okay. Now, these are the things Ugandans shall no, always do. You have other citizenship. <laughs> that you have other citizenship. Maybe not on Can I give you information? No, it's for me. But it's okay. Can I give you information? Okay. 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 In a country, this banana republic, so cassava republic, so ours, mm -hmm. people have two citizenships. You have the citizenship of your tribe, hey. that is tribal citizenship, mm -hmm. and the national citizenship. So there are those who think they even have national anthems. National mm. anthem of a tribe. <coughs> there is that sentiment. Don't have. have got sentimental citizenship when they are going to bury to, uh, to Musimbe Mutegeni. They say we need another governor from Bachiga. Oh, that yeah. is Bachiga <laughs> citizenship. I, I wasn't there. Right. Mm. But, but, right. but, okay, but I'm saying but, but I'm, it's okay. But right. I, I right. there. Yes. But what I'm saying if that is done, mm -hmm. then you see what brings also that Bachiga citizenship. What is Bachiga? Mm. We are, were a nation before Uganda was. Mm -hmm. So you allow amalgamation <laughs> and and how and you work. <laughs> yes. yes. I I am, you said and have working documents. <laughs> you are saying we are coming. We are coming. We are coming together and we shall. What do you bring on table? What do you bring on table? Bring? What do you want? What how should we run? And run Unless that happens, we shall have change of power from Otieno to Brian Atuheire to Professor. But as far as the gun is still in control, mm. there is no place that can go. And lastly, on the point we are asking, Uganda has no policy. Uganda has no budget. Uganda has many policies. Listen, listen. Policy. Uganda's po policy is what Museven wants. You can have your things written. You want to call them, have them. But if he says, we are now investing here in the parish model, it doesn't mean the department to clear him. No. Or to, to, even the, the budget. resources will uh, we'll just jump flow flow to that place. into that place. Mm -hmm. So there is no policy to talk about. You could have a paper, you call it a policy. Like people, I've been telling people, you can't People who are not free can't have a constitution. The joke here I, among uh, the NGOs mm -hmm. is that Uganda makes very good, perfect policies. They are not implemented. They are perfected in Kenya mm -hmm. and, and implemented, implemented in Rwanda. Rwanda. Okay. Okay. Now, now, just really now the last point I want to what, 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 I'm saying, to him, and you see, another thing is a constitution must protect Brian Atwey, the mm -hmm. citizen. Mm -hmm. If it cannot protect me, it's not a constitution. Okay. If Kakwenza is gotten and the person says, don't torture, you torture him, that concern is hopeless. Mm -hmm. It's just a mere paper. And, and thirdly, as I finish, it has also turned into Museven's rough book, like I've already said. Museven says, this paper um, doesn't paper me very well, that is plucked. <laughs> he says, this one, this one, this one is not very well, not in tandem with my interest, it's plucked. So that cannot be called a constitution, and therefore, if you don't have a constitution, you cannot have policies, you cannot have a minimum agenda, so we can only have a minimum agenda after we transit from force to people rule. When will that happen, Joe? When we fight, we <laughs> want to use a gun again. Comment, yeah. The concern says, I can use the enemy for the constitution, we could okay. use a gun. I, I, I can see the blood in Brian. And Museven yeah. says he's still young enough to go back to the bush. Yes, so you can, you can go back. What do you envision? Mm. Hopeless, how can I form myself? <laughs> the language. <laughs> oh, well, I think now we are getting infected with the type of language oh, now uh, everywhere. Oteno has the... Oteno we have to take them to Chankwans. We have to take them to Chankwans. Mm. Very specific, uh, deliberate... For cultured language. Cultured language. Authoritative okay. and uh, part of this. Mm. Civil language. That, uh, mm. that it, it, it was actually an emphasis mm. on waking up Uganda. Mm -hmm. Because I think the most important thing this country actually needs is a detox. Mm -hmm. We need to be detoxed from NRA propaganda. We need to be detoxed from militarism. We need to be detoxed from dictatorship. We need to be detoxed from Chanquanzism. Mm -hmm. We need to be detoxed from NRAism. We actually need to try and establish where NRA started. And insanism. And insanism. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we, we need, we need to be detoxed from poverty. Uh, and, so we are not no, no, from, po from, from poverty. You please yeah. sort it out. No, but let me tell you this. I think the attempts mm -hmm. to create one nation state was actually made by our founding parents, to their credits. Um, while actually our independence, and I can I'll just start, start with them because of time, while our independence was towards the end, you know, slightly, several, nearly 70 years away from where a professor was starting, Uganda from, right, quite rightly, um, 
political leaders of the then established political parties are heads of identities, kingdoms, and indeed heads of identities, including the Republic of Adol and others, constituted themselves leading really to the ne negotiations, discussions that actually eventually led us to our independence. Uh, at independence, we, we, we had a pluralist uh, democratic process, which as I understand it from the root books, even people who were reasonably not satisfied with the electoral outcome at independence, in some cases, simply said that yes, we recognize that that could have been slightly better, but we let go because we're desperately wanting to start and found a new nation. The, Republic, the Uganda was actually founded on independence. And a multi-party uh, democratic system came in, a government elected. Uh, that government was impressively UPC, and they did a fantastic thing. UPCKY? No, no, no. It wasn't oh, yes. UPCKY. Mm. No, it wasn't. Mm. UPC won the elections with a simple minor majority. UPC consciously said that we need, because we are an emerging new nation, Professor, this is a very important one, you know, emerging new nation, let's bring together all political parties and organizations to form a national consensus. And why didn't you bring you know, DP? You know? Why didn't you bring DP? Because that's why it's important to listen. And, you know, I don't know how you it didn't know. It was KYUPC. <laughs> I don't know how you didn't know. You are running from KYUPC. No, no, because I don't know how you did law without history. But because of a limited time, I'm just trying to tell you this. That, look, um, the, the call for a government of national unity, you know, the first person, the first person <coughs> to call was actually uh, 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 Ben Chuan. So what they approached all political leaders, DP refused to join the government of national unity because they couldn't sit with KY. Uh -huh. They couldn't sit with KY. Mm -hmm. Independence was approaching after the elections. Or what they meet uh, uh, Ben Chuanoka in, in the lobby of parliament, said, look, you guys, we are waiting for you. You know, what's going on? Uh, Chiwanaka had said he would think about it. On this occasion, Chiwanaka told about it in the lobby of parliament that, look, I am not interested. Why? Because he could not sit. <coughs> as part of a government nationality. Mm -hmm. So as we know, um, <laughs> because Chiwanoka refused, DP refused to join, not because of UPC or any other political party, mm -hmm. DP refused to sit with KY. Mm -hmm. That's why DP guys walking the streets of Kampala, mm -hmm. our Kebak, no, they rejected it because of their Kebak, Uganda politics, religious politics. Mm -hmm. UPC had sorted Sorry, out this thing. You exactly. know, yes, indeed. And of course for us, we had one election, and you see, this national KK want to share. No, but, uh, this because, national KK want to share. Because UPC didn't have a comfortable majority. No, it was a the no, constitution right. required, uh, anyway, you have to have a comfortable majority in a parliamentary <laughs> <laughs> government. No, yes, of course, Professor, that's what I'm, I'm giving it to you. So we, it was uh, imposed on imposed UPC the, yeah. by the constitution. No, no, no. By Profe the constitutional Pro professor, requirement. Professor, with absolute respect, I'm speaking out of authority because I know it and I know you do it. But for the purpose of these people, UPC had a working majority of three. Uh, the constitution at the time gave. You didn't have a comfortable no, majority. I'm trying to, let me explain it to you. The constitution provided that the winning party had nine nominated members of parliament. So really that gave UPC a working majority. Of three. Of three. Okay. Which by and large was a struggle. But they could have done it. That's what he you said, know, a could, comfortable. They use oh, the word yeah. comfortable. But, 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 yeah. not, not impossible. But I'm saying we chose. You know, you guys, we need to give credit where it is mm -hmm. if you are to rebuild this country. Mm -hmm. Because part of the problem is propaganda. And we want to choose sometimes <laughs> inconvenient facts mm -hmm. and sometimes convenience miscalculations. Okay. So really we had that and you know I'm really making it a conclusion there. So DP refuses what happens we ended up with a coalition. The coalition together itself was to me it was a milestone. It was a plus yes. We are trying to say let's work together and create a new nation. Number one. Number two you know for God and my country that idea thing I love it for God and my country you know we gave it to our country. Do you know what Obote would always complete his speeches for God and my country. When was the last time you were leader Say it for God and my country, the public. We are trying to talk about national psyche, about national interests and our priorities. Mm -hmm. Final point, because, of, because of time. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Final point of this is this. Policies, actually, political party policies. You know, um, so UPC's policies and programs will not necessarily be the same with the DP, who are basically a right-wing group, who, mm -hmm. who believe in, you know, whatever kind of stuff. But, you know, some of our socialist values would be based on our programs. Now, how we sell our programs to the majority of Ugandans is how political parties would work. So, political parties are formed around social values and ideals, mm -hmm. you know, so there again you can't blame them. But as I said, I know from in terms of our roots. But the quick thing I want to say is this. Though. And the quick mm -hmm. one in terms mm -hmm. of way yeah. forward, yeah. What, what do you see? What can be done? What uh, is possible? That, that's my point. And, and so I'm simply saying that, look, we need a, a, a political space mm -hmm. in which we struggle and stumble. Leadership emerges out of the political organizations who are able to articulate values that represent what these political parties and organizations represent. Put them on the national table. By and large, 
you know, a majority consensus, mm. critical majority consensus mm. emerges. Mm. And when that emerges, a leadership that forms a government, a conscious government, that's why I was trying to bring the for God and my country kind of stuff you know, and priorities. You consciously lead through example. Mm. The reason in which we are in this mess is that Museveni can stalk and buttress, you know, criminals, can stalk and buttress, you know, uh, people who corrupt people, people who stolen billions of shillings. If that is part of the minimum for national values, what is it? If you can see your president comes on national table and says, I don't care, I'm not anybody's servant. So why, why would our beautiful camera lady, you know, bother? What lesson is she going to learn? She's a, a young person in her 20s trying to build on this Republic of Uganda. What is the need for her? Mm. She might begin to think otherwise. Mm. So really basically, this, so this country needs leadership. My opinion is this. This thing is possible. Just a quick thing. You talked about uh, Ghana. Have I ever said this on this program? I was lucky about 10 or so years ago when there was an, a nil struggle for competition, where the governing political party did not want to let go. The internal sec the security, the military guys, called the two leaders who were in a stalemate, said, look, you guys, we've called you guys here because you know between the two of you, you know who lost what the election. The problem is, and yeah. you know who, what the problem is, mm. and we know who's who. We are not going to intervene on anybody else, but we're not going to allow. You guys need to make a decision. In one room. In one room. And that is how it started. Mm -hmm. It started from then on. The process went on. These guys realized that there is a stake. But if today Museven can do anything because it's a permanent impunity, because he has taken the gun and taken trained little children, seven-year-old kids, how to fight and how to kill and how to hate, that is the national culture this NRA has built. But I'm trying to say to you that going back to independence, there was ever, it was not perfect. Mm. And of course it went, it went away somewhere, somehow. But no, there was ever a time in which citizens of this country, from across mm. the country, Different kind of identities. People came together and simply said that well, one thing that we need in this country is the public good. Final point: as a young student, oh, yeah. national union of students. <laughs> no, national union of students. Do you, know, do you know the slogan? Yeah. Do you know the slogan it's for us, point. national union of students of Uganda at the time, Nusu, that these guys plagiarized. It was said, Uganda first. So you grow as young people. Uganda first. Uganda first. Those cultures, those things. Were, this, in this country, this is acceptable. This is not acceptable. Mm. It is not something that you can teach in Chang mm -hmm. It is how we create the culture here. And for which I, I totally agree with you. The languages that we use, yes. Okay. Be okay. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Witch, you've heard the genuine uh, appeal from uh, the man from UPC. The fact he is giving you is that you have the opportunity to organize and allow this dialogue to happen and sell your manifesto in terms of uh, uh, making them become values which are agreeable and acceptable. I, well, I don't want to take you back to the earlier discussion on what are the failings, the shortcomings, the weaknesses. We all own them that we are not here where we want to be. But I just want to pick your thoughts quickly in terms of a better Uganda. And don't talk from the point of view of a political party. Just your thoughts as a senior citizen. What would we want to see happen in terms of recommendations going forward? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I realize also as a, a chair of the discussion, you have challenge in managing time. Absolutely. So I, mm. I'm not going to be like my Congress brother. <laughs> he had many <laughs> chains of chains ideas of and correct. recommendations. He had uh, many. But what I'm saying is that uh, uh, as a way forward, that let the country know that the conflict that is in parties mm. is not in any way fomented external or external, internal, as someone may wish to say, uh, by, by NRM. If it is external, not intentional and derogatively, like we want to create it, it could be external in the sense that we have won, we have taken state power, and we are, as we are ruling. And that suffocating others. And it is affecting others. Suffocating, it, not it, affecting. Affecting. <laughs> suffocating. <laughs> that is the externality. That is the externality that I could agree. Okay? Mm. And we can't apologize for that because mm. the masses voted for us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that is the, ex the extent to the externality. And, they are, and, they are, we, and they are patriotic. Uh, but yeah. we wish them well. Mm -hmm. We don't want to poke, poke our nose into their matters. Mm. We don't want to insult them. We don't. In fact, we are promoting iPod. Mm. <laughs> now, for a way forward, I mean, for the minimum, it's also that, please, I call on Ugandans to look at the, what we call the core principles mm -hmm. of NRM. Mm -hmm. It is coded. Mm -hmm. Coded me here, meaning written down in our constitution mm -hmm. and we cannot go ahead to prescribe something good for the party 
which we think is not good for the country. So we want those mini minimum as we develop our democracy. There are indicators going, there's not freedom. Here we are on civic space. That is one forward. But we keep on getting challenges. Not everything is the best. I thank you. Very well put. Brian, I think, Professor, you'll conclude being an academician. Maybe, uh, uh, Brian, thank... just a comment quickly oh, then. I, I, a recommendation. I, I You've heard the NRM uh, spokesperson I, I, here. I think <laughs> that only free people mm -hmm. can have minimum standards to live by. And as far as we are captives, it is better that we focus on fighting for freedom than going into uh, the, 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 these semantics of fighting in parties and everything. And, and I always say they don't exist because they drain us. Mm. Because the struggle is bigger than But you noted that parties. if uh, some you will expose, you know, is that... Yes, 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 yes. If I am on the way mm -hmm. fighting and someone is pulling my leg mm -hmm. while we are in some direction, I, will, I, I can't say I am fighting the other one. Oh, but yet you're holding me. Mm. I beat you up and then go forward. <laughs> because without beating you up, I won't move forward. Mm. And, and, every, and that's, that's human nature. That's instinct. It's not even about studying in class. Mm. If, if someone is holding your back, your shirt, your shirt in a football match, you fall down and they put a free kick. <laughs> but you see here, the free kick is not there because the referee is uh, not a fair referee. So you sort this one and move with the ball. Mm. Mm. And, and, and I want the opposition not to lose the focus and the sight of the board to remain moving forward until we gain that freedom and then put the main minimums for Uganda and then have a country run on, the, on its constitution and on the deals of the people who are free. But a people who are captured like us thinking we can uh, follow pat purchasing from Changwazi and our people gain, they get education and not tortured, guns and killing people. It's very, very, it's, 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 it's some, something, it's a delusion. It's, it's, it's unteaching to the young people like myself. It's unteaching. And therefore, we should ask, by the way, when you, when you, when you are produced by, by fathers that are not clear, but you, you Brian, can forgive raise me. up, be clear, and, and teach the people. Forgive me for putting this question back to you again. We have agreed we don't have national principles, values. Okay, NRM is saying they are marketing theirs, but it looks as though we have not reached he had, and he acknowledges that, that we have not reached where we, we desire to be in terms of the minimum bear. However, in your recommendation, I'm not hearing you are still talking politics. My, my, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, go, uh, go beyond the okay, politics. Okay, 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 okay. My recommendation yes. is addressing the cause. Mm -hmm. You want to hear me mm. address the symptoms. Ah. I will not as a scientist. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're finished yes. like that? Yes. Okay. All yes. right. Uh, Prof, you are not a politician. I am. Although you comment. No, I'm a politician. He is. Okay. He is right. I'm a politician. Just, you mm -hmm. know, but you don't even talk in terms of <laughs> election. practicing right Cont now. Contesting for office. power mm. and office. Yes. Politics is about contestation mm. of power. Yes. Okay. And I am part of contestation of power mm -hmm. and values. Mm -hmm. Coming back to our question of minimum standards and how we can construct a nation, build a nation, mm -hmm. and have organizational principles to build a nation. First of all, let me discount this view. Uh, that uh, Uganda was forcefully, or Ugandans were forcefully brought together, and therefore that's why we are not making it. All countries have been yeah. built like that. Even France or UK, one kingdom forced others to take on the values and principles of one. That's how they did it. But nevertheless, we are living in a different century with UN and all these international standards. Now you can't use force to unite people. We need to take up the model of USA. Mm -hmm. The model of USA mm -hmm. is that they have constructed a nation on the constitution. Okay. They have constructed a constitution and whenever somebody, a politician goes overboard, they normally say, look to the second amendment, mm -hmm. the first amendment. Mm -hmm. And the constitution has become the idea upon which they look at in constructing their country. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we missed that opportunity here. Because we made a constitution 20 years down the road, it has been amended more than 100 times. It has been rendered inconsequential. Mm -hmm. But if we follow the constitution and in amended only if necessary. necessary and after a certain clause 
has failed to be mm. operationalized not because somebody wants Another power time. or something like that but nevertheless we can still salvage something we still demand for a national dialogue dialogue, dialogue. About that yes and when we agree, and first of all agree before the national dialogue takes place even, mm -hmm. uh, talks, uh, dialogue within a dialogue, that what we agree upon will be now put in the constitution. You see? Will be put in the constitution and then we see how to move forward. Mm -hmm. The problem we have had is that we have been, uh, first of all, our constitution has been rendered useless by NRM in particular. So, mm -hmm. It's a rough book on seven. Can uh, that, 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 that's wants. very, very, very unfortunate. So, but we could still salvage and write a constitution and agree. The challenge now, or the practical thing I would wish, wishes are sometimes not horses, not so horses. beggars can't write, yeah. <laughs> that would craft such a document mm. to lead us when there is no force that is dominant. Mm. The challenge is that when there is a force that is dominant, it impinges its dominance, its hegemony on the document that we want. Process, actually. Like this national dialogue, NRM, because it is dominant, it is the one which put the agenda. water on it. Okay. No, they, they more or less refused it because mm -hmm. they did not initiate it and they could not control it. And NRM, I am an NRM student now, they will not enter into an initiative or process which they have not initiated. Uh, However good and noble it is, as long as it is from outside, they do not see that one. He's talking about patriotism. In this country, by the way, we need to, dis to, to, de to, to disabuse ourselves of politics. Mr. Tieno talked of detoxing. Let me complete. Mm. The politics of hypocrisy. Organizing society around hypocrisy. Today, if you talk about patriotism, which is a noble thing, I know by deed, in most cases, people who talk about patriotism, who think patriotism, in most cases, not in all cases, they are not patriotic. They are the same people who sing it every day, who grab land. Land of individuals, land of... of, of uh, Government land, public land. Public land, uh, district farm institutes, <laughs> I don't know what, they were grabbed. They are the same people who grab scholarships. They are the same people who grab tenders and contracts. They are the same people, those who think patriotism, mm -hmm. they are the same people who grab elections. Who even kill people? Well, killing, let me... They it killed in November, in November, they killed more than 70 in town. But the point is, we should they not killed. organize society around hypocrisy. <laughs> okay. Hypocrisy has killed our process of development. Yes, Uganda is a young country, but stunted. Hmm. And a standard child can be given some good proteins and carbohydrates and vitamins and ballast, and he comes out of that stunting. As we talk now, we are stunted, and unless we agree that every Ugandan has a stake in this country, we respect the dignity of everybody. You don't say, when so-and-so is tortured, that's okay. When the other one is tortured, it's not okay. You remember when they tortured the uh, some uh, uh, NRM guys, uh, the, 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 the Mbaba's people, mm, mm. they tortured the people in Tunga, yes. my home area. Mm. Even they were lifted by a helicopter. Helicopter has never gone to carry people in the rural area <laughs> to Mbarara National mm. Referral Hospital. Mm -hmm. They torture Kakwenze, that is okay. That's hypocrisy. No, they say that's they, hypocrisy. They the leopard is mm. well. That's <laughs> hypocrisy <laughs> that we should avoid and respect the dignity of man. Mm. In this man, I'm including woman. I know I'm oh, sitting course. here, woman. Yeah, <laughs> Dignity of people, respect people, have fairness, have social justice, have the principle of equality. For me, I'm not saying those are the ones that should lead this country. I would be for the principle of equality. Mm -hmm. And no <coughs> equality. Equality, social justice, and fairness, and respect for the dignity of human beings. I think, Professor, you uh, made uh, your point. Uh, although uh, for, I have for, for hypocrisy, mm. I Just like to second. say mm. that the movement hates it. If the movement believes in objective analysis and getting a solution. And getting a solution. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, we have come to the end of this program, ladies, lady myself and gentlemen. <laughs>
And I think that uh, we have had a very uh, heated discussion, which cannot be concluded this afternoon. We shall uh, spill it over to the next program. But I'm indebted to you, gentlemen, for giving us your time as a civic space. However, we will expect to hear from the citizens. Those are your views. What do the citizens say? And I would like to invite you, our viewers, to follow us and also engage in this conversation. This is not just for the gentlemen and people who come here, but would like to hear your views in envisioning a Uganda that we want. That is why this civic space uh, TV is here for us as citizens of Uganda to engage in these difficult conversations. And I think this one has been a difficult one, yet we must engage. Let us sign out from here. We will meet you again the next program and we shall continue uh, this uh, conversation on political parties, perhaps from another angle which we have not existed. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen in the studio here and our viewer. We want to sign up from here. Shalom.